So hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, it's been a while since I made a video, but now I'm back with a new series, which I named as the Weekly Five. And uh, my name is Waleshega Munyere, and I am the Yule Daktari. So let's start. What is this? I'm talking about the Weekly Five. In this Weekly Five, we'll be having a series of five questions every week and the questions will be um, in line with the curriculum uh, offered here at the University of Nairobi uh, that is for gross anatomy where we shall be covering five questions based on the weekly objectives so for this week which is week one or week five rather on the timetable we shall be covering the, uh, the gluteal region the posterior thigh and the popliteal fossa. So, as I, as I have said, we have five questions. Each has three parts. I want to take the uh, least time possible to make this video short, but comprehensive. So, welcome. So, the first question would be this question. So, this question is testing your knowledge on the gluteal region, and you have been asked to identify uh, the structure the board B, yeah, uh, D, and uh, the structure about E. So B here, if you have identified B as piriformis muscle, that is very correct. That's the piriformis muscle. You can see it is, it is fan-shaped. Okay, it's fan-shaped. And this is the key muscle of the gluteal region. Okay. And muscle D here, if you have identified it as uh, quadratus femoris and not quadriceps femoris, it's quadratus femoris. That is correct because you can see it's it's quadrate in shape. Eh? It's it's somehow quadrate in shape. And E here, you can see here is this structure. And you can see it is emerging from the infrapiriformic compartment. So uh, this is the infrapiriformic compartment. You can see it's a structure emerging from the infrapiriformic compartment, but it is coming to supply this huge structure, which is uh, gluteus maximus. So if you have identified E as the inferior gluteal nerve, that is... Uh, correct okay so uh, uh, they are uh, the correct answers to the first part of the question then what is the root value of a and c so a here you can see it's it's, it's a nerve there which is imagined from the suprapiriformic compartment and then it is somehow sandwiched with, with between these two muscles the muscles which are named as uh, k and m so the muscle K is gluteus medius and M is gluteus minimus, okay? So the nerve which runs in, in that intermuscular plane, the plane between those two muscles is the superior gluteal nerve and the superior gluteal nerve is the one which supplies those two muscles. So what is the root value of superior uh, gluteal nerve? If you've said it's uh, L, L4, L5 and S1, that is correct. Eh? And then C here, you can see C, is this nerve imagine from the infrapiriformic compartment lateral to this big big nerve uh, which we shall name later on let me name it at, as s so that nerve c here just medial it's, it's rather medial it's medial to s you can see it's coming and lying it's on top of this muscle it's coming to lie on top of this hamstring muscle so this tells you that this mass this nerve is uh, a, a cutaneous nerve and that cutaneous nerve is the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve or the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh and the root values is s1 s2 and s3 i'll show you in a short how to uh, um, know the root values of all these nerves in the gluteal region so what is f so f are these structures which emerge from the infrapiriformic compartment so let me just mute this so F are these structures which emerge from the infrapiriformic compartment and immediately uh, exit the, uh, the gluteal region and enter the pudendal canal. So those structures are the pudendal nerve and the internal pudendal vessels. So the bony landmark used to locate the, the especially the pudendal nerve is the ischiospine, eh? the ischiospine. So as, as I have said, how do you uh, know, how do you rather, how do how do you remember the root values? The way I remember them, I remember the root value of sciatic nerve, which is L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. So that is the root value of uh, sciatic nerve, okay? But then I add S4. I'll show you why I have added S4. Please note, S4 is not 
this is not a root value. It's not a root value of a uh, 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 sciatic. Eh? But I'll show you uh, uh, in a few uh, uh, why I have uh, added uh, it there. Okay. So, so the way I remember them is I group them in groups of three. Okay. So I take L4, L5, S1, and that becomes my superior luteal nerve. And then I take the next three, L5, S1, S2, and that automatically becomes my inferior gluteal nerve. And then I take the next three, S1, S2, S3, and that becomes my uh, posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh, or the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And then I take S2, S3, S4 now, and that becomes uh, my pudendo nerve. So that's how I uh, put in pudendo nerve. That's how I remember the, the root values of these nerves of the uh, gluteal region. It's actually very easy. The next question uh, is showing the hip bone, and we have been asked to name the constituents of this bone. Eh? So the three constituents by now, you should know them. They are the ilium, ischium, and pubis. Eh? So this is ilium here. Yeah? Ischium is this part where uh, you sit on, and the pubis is uh, that part. Now, what are the muscles attached to the points they put A, B, C? So A, this part is known as the supraacetabular fossa. So this is the acetabulum. So this is the acetabulum here. So it's a fossa above it. So the supraacetabular fossa. And uh, if you've said the reflected head of rectus femoris is, is attached there, you are correct. B is the anterior superior iliac spine, ACs. And if you've said sartorius attaches there, that's correct. C is the anterior inferior iliac spine. And if you've said uh, the, the straight head uh, of rectus femoris attaches there, that is very correct. And, and uh, D here is the outer outer lip, outer lip, outer lip of the iliac crest, the outer lip of the iliac crest, and the muscle which attaches there is the, uh, the, the tensor fascia lata muscle. Okay, so um, there you go. Now, what's E? E is the ischial spine, and I have said, as I have said, it's the landmark, it's the bony landmark for identifying the pudendal nerve, so the clinical relevance is it's used as the bony landmark when performing a pudendo nerve block. Okay. Now, question three. Uh, the parts they bought A, B, A, C, and D. So this is part of the proximal femur. So by now, I expect you to know this is a femur. And please know how to side a femur. Uh, know how to side a femur. Is it from the right side of the body or the left side of the body with the reasons? Now, um, A here... Uh, is the head of femur, that's the head of femur. C is the greater trochanter, and D is the lesser trochanter. Now, we might ask you to, to, to name muscles which are attached, which muscle is attached to the lesser trochanter. If that is asked, please remember the muscle idiosoas. Eh? The idiosoas, idiosoas, idiosoas is, it, it's actually a tendon because it's a, it's a common tendon for uh, uh, iliacus, uh, iliacus and psoas major okay so two muscles are attached there via a common tendon so iliacus and psoas major are attached to the lesser trochanter via that iliopsoas tendon now um now what muscles are attached to the parts highlighted so in red here that's the, that part is known as the quadrate tubercle along the iliac crest and that is where uh, quadratus femoris, I said quadratus femoris, not quadriceps, quadratus femoris is attached there. In, in, in green here, uh, that's the area of the uh, gluteal tuberosity, and that's where the, the deep quarter, uh, the deep quarter of um, uh, gluteus maximus is attached. Remember, uh, um, uh, the other part of gluteus maximus is attached to the, uh, uh, the idiotibial band, which is then attached to the gadis tubercle on the uh, outer aspect of uh, tibia, okay? So this is where just the deep quarter of um, uh, gluteus maximus is attached. Then in yellow here, this part, that's the lateral surface of the greater trochanter, and that is where gluteus medius is attached. Gluteus minimus is attached on the anterior surface of the greater trochanter, but if, if, if you are pointed on the lateral surface, please remember that is gluteus medius. And uh, yep, there. Now the, the other part, 
here E, that part pointed there, that is known as the trochanteric fossa, okay? That's the uh, trochanteric, trochanteric fossa. And the muscle attached there is um, the obturator, obturator, externus muscle, okay? Obturator externus. It's one of the six short lateral rotators of the hip joint, okay? So obturator externus. Now, name the type of fractures that occur in region B. B is the neck. So what are some types of fractures which occur there? Because neck fractures are, uh, femoral neck fractures are very important clinically because uh, if not uh, uh, managed, they present with uh, a vascular necrosis of the uh, head of uh, femur, okay? So let's talk about the types of fractures. We have three major types. One occurs just at the base of the head of femur, which is known as the subcapital fracture. Uh, another one occurs at the mid uh, uh, the the mid neck level, so it's a mid cervical fracture. And one occurs at the base of the neck, which is the base cervical fracture. So these fractures are uh, within the capsule of the hip joint, so they are intracapsular intracapsular uh, fractures. Okay, and these fractures are important because, as I have said, uh, the supply of the head of femur uh, is derived from the retinacular arteries. So we usually have the trochanteric anastomosis, which is found uh, near the trochanteric fossa. And I want you to go and uh, find out which arteries participate in the trochanteric anastomosis. One of the uh, uh, most important one is the medial uh, circumflex, uh, uh, circumflex, fe circumflex femoral artery, okay? The medial circumflex femoral artery. So that artery gives retinacular arteries which pass through the neck, okay? They are bound, uh, the, the retinacular arteries are bound to the neck of femur. So when there is a fracture, we have those arteries are damaged and that causes the, uh, the, the blood supply to the head of femur to be uh, compromised, causing uh, a vascular necrosis, okay? That is for the case of adults. Please go and read about uh, the, the blood supply of the head of femur in, 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 in children because it is different. Okay. Now the fourth question, second last question. Uh, name A, B, A, B, and C. If you've named A as the semitendinosus muscle, that is correct. These are the hamstrings. B is the long head of biceps femoris, and C is the uh, semimembranosa. So semitendinosus lies on top of semimembranosus. Now, um, what is the innervation of A? So all hamstring muscles are innervated by the uh, tibial component of sciatic nerve, okay? The tibial component of sciatic nerve, okay? Now, um, D is sciatic nerve, and uh, as, as I have said, that's the root value. L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. You need to remember the root value. Now, the last question here, uh, uh, this shows the popliteal fossa, uh, the region of the popliteal fossa. So A is the sciatic nerve, B is the popliteal artery, okay? So this is the popliteal vein which has been cut. I know that might be confusing, but a uh, popliteal vein has been cut. Ideally, popliteal artery is the deepest of the three structures. So the most superficial of the structures of the of the of the of the, of the contents of the popliteal fossa, the most superficial content is the is the tibial nerve, so a nerve, then next is the vein, and then the deepest structure is the artery. But here you can see the vein has been cut. And what you're seeing is now the artery. Um, um, oh, B was not in, in fact asked. <laughs> it was not cost. It was not. Uh, uh, we we need a note to identify it. But we have C on the other hand is semimembranosus. You can see semitendinosus on top of it, and uh, that is gracilis there. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is um, semimembranosus and F. F over here, that's uh, the tendon of biceps femoris on its uh, root to attach to the head of fibula, okay? Um, yeah. So regarding E, so E, remember, I've said A is sciatic nerve. You can see the terminal branches of sciatic nerve, D, which is the tibial nerve now, it's the tibial nerve, and E, which is the, uh, the terminal uh, branch, which is now the common peroneal nerve, which is also known as the common fibular nerve. You can use uh, the two common peroneal nerve 
common fibular nerve, okay? So either of the two terms is correct. So what are some branches within the space? So if asked within the space, within the popliteal fossa, if you say the two terminal branches of common peroneal nerve, which is the, the deep and the superficial peroneal nerve, that would be wrong because you, you are being asked what are the branches of the common peroneal nerve when it is within the popliteal fossa. So it has five branches within the popliteal fossa, and these include the sura-communicating nerve, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf, the superior lateral uh, genicular nerve, the inferior lateral genicular nerve, so those are four, and the recurrent genicular nerve, okay? So those are the branches of uh, common peroneal nerve within the popliteal fossa. Then B, we named it as the popliteal artery. And uh, what are some branches of the popliteal artery? So they are usually, I usually divide them as two. We have muscular branches and the genicular branches. So the muscular branches are the sura arteries, and they are usually two, uh, which supply the, the, uh, the muscle group, which is known as the triceps surae. Triceps surae. So triceps surae include the two heads of gastrocnemius and soleus. So those are supplied by the sura arteries. And here you can see there that there is the medial, medial sura artery there. And this here is the lateral sura artery. You can see the lateral sura artery is going to there. This is this structure. This is the lateral head of gastrocnemius. And uh, this here is the medial head of gastrocnemius. You can see those arteries are, you can see they are branching from this uh, structure which we have named as the popliteal artery. So those are the sura arteries. And then we have the genicular arteries which supply the knee, or the, the, the knee joint that is. And here you can see we have the, the superior medial, okay, the inferior medial. I think this is the inferior lateral. And then the other two include the middle genicular and the superior lateral, which I can't uh, quite trace it here. Uh, but those are the genicular arteries. So they are, they are either superior medial genicular artery, superior lateral genicular artery, inferior medial genicular artery, inferior lateral genicular artery, and the middle genicular artery. The middle genicular artery pierces the knee joint capsule to supply the intracapsular uh, structures, those structures within the knee joint, such as the cruciate uh, ligaments, okay? Um, so that's it. Those are the five questions which I had. And that's it for, for this week's weekly five. Stay tuned for next week's weekly five. But before that, please check out some other videos which are, which are in this channel uh, under the lower limb playlist where I have uploaded some detailed anatomy videos, okay? So thank you for your attention and uh, have a great week ahead. See you next week. Bye-bye.